Hello everybody, I'm Ali Bube, the creative artist from Omnitus HD, and today I'm going to be starting the first ever episode in the, vid in the video tutorial series about the Mac OS X program Pixelmator, and I'm going to be in charge of the series. Hope you enjoy and learn from these tutorials. Hello YouTube and welcome to the first ever episode in the tutorial series Pixelmator from Omnitus HD. Um, as you guys might, and I say might because I know this program isn't that popular yet, or maybe, I don't know, um, have heard of Pixelmator, but to those who haven't, I'm gonna show you what it is but briefly because we want, we want to get directly to the tutorial, if you want to call it. So, let's search Pixelmator. Yes, this is Pixelmator, only for 20 bu one bucks on the App Store, except if you want to get it in any other way, but that is not my problem. Anyways, today I'm just going to be showing you this tutorial. Now let's upload up Pixelmator. As you might have noticed, I have a Mac OS X system, because Pixelmator, as I said in the intro, is only for Mac OS X. So let's create something. I suggest for all laptops, a default size... Um, of 900 pixels wide and 700 pixels tall. Um, I um, this is not really a tutorial. I'm I'm here to give you a walkthrough of the program so that when I speak about tools in the tutorials, you are you don't get confused and can follow up easily. So yes, here we are. And as you can see, the interface is quite simple. Pixelmator, basically, in the in the creative artist and graphic designers dictionary, is a simple is a simplified version of Photoshop. I know most of all of the people out there who are who say I'm not gonna do graphic design because Photoshop is too hard and too complicated. You have Pixelmator, guys. Pixelmator is so easy, and when I say so easy, I mean so easy. So let's get on with it. Uh, firstly, uh, I'm gonna talk about the tools. This is the magic wand tool, which makes you um, so, which makes you select certain areas of photograph. So, for example, let's boot up um, this photograph to make a new layer. You click uh, with a photograph. You click layer, new layer, choose picture, and okay, and then you pick it or just drag and drop the pixel onto Pixelmator. So here we go. Uh, I happen to want to pick this photo, and as you can see, the magic wand tool picks uh, picks the colors in the area, um, just like so, and turn and so and selects them. And this actually helps if you want to remove stuff and only keep this area as it is with colors. But there are also other tools for that, so that's the magic tool done. Uh, if you select anything and you want to deselect it, right click, deselect. Now for this, this is a cursor tool, cursor tool that lets you move images around. This is, uh, this is a select tool, which you can select things with, like, like the magic, like the magic one, but this is more simple, you can cut them, uh, you can copy paste, edit in quick mask mode, and so on and so on. This is the same thing, but circular. Same thing. No, this is the lasso tool that lets you, that is an identity selecting tool, but lets you like go freestyle with it and custom select. This is a polygonal, that's how I pronounce it, lasso tool, which makes you custom but with straight sides, not freestyle, like sorry about that, like the the other lasso tool, yeah, uh, cancel selection, this is the crop tool that lets you select the part of the photograph that you want to keep and click crop and it skims it down to that part, the whole image, not just the layer, the whole pixelmator creation and you can again refine your selection later, but that's the area we selected. Uh, this is the cutter tool that happens to that happens to custom slice your images and 
format JPEG, and you can save them, I think. Um, quality, you just slice the image. Now, this is one of the very useful tools. Let's say, for example, you want to stick this goldfish into a coral leaf. Co no, sorry, clownfish into a coral leaf. Use either this tool or that tool. That tool is much easier. Then you remove the background. So, for example, if you untick anything on the layers area, then you just remove it from the composition. So, let's remove the background layer. As you can see, you just select the areas you want. And guess that, which means it's clear. Background layer, if we show it again, it's going to be white because it's sort of transparent, this area. But this tool happens to be better because using this tool, what we do, what we can do is that it's just like the magic wand. It selects areas we want. So let us go back to the clownfish. It's, it selects areas we want, like that like areas of the same color and it's much easier to use with black backgrounds and photographs because you because that's the problem with paint and all of these programs you don't want to go around coloring again uh, and also for any tool that uses this circular thing which is called a brush you have to click you have to open the brushes either double click on that or um, or show view um, and you can show anything, your fonts, your colors, you can enter, you can enter full screen, zoom in, zoom out, zoom to fit, show rulers, show grid, hide stuff, show stuff, and so on and so on. Moving on, this is a brush tool that lets you paint in many shapes and other, many shapes and colors and other stuff. And I think these are also in Photoshop. But the, and there are lots of templates. This is a sparkle template, as we can see. Sparkle just lets change the color with any brush or, or anything that uses color. You can you can change the color from here, from this area. If you click over here, and you have the color circle or the color sliders or just simple colors. We want white and or the spectrum. You can an older spectrum of colors or as crayons or you have or you write or you write the RGB of the color and, and or copy and paste it. But I prefer this because it gives you more control and everything. Let's make it white. As you can see it gives the stars, sparkle, sparkle, um, and lots of lots of other stars. You can create and custom a new brush. There are lots of other brushes, like abstract brushes that give you cool shapes. And sorry about that again. Um, and all of that kind of stuff. Smoke effects. But smoke effects happen to be in smoke, where you can create smoke effects and fog on your photos. Uh, grunge and so on and so on. You can experiment with them when you get the program. This is a gradient tool. Which covers which covers an ingredient. You have the gradients over here. You can sorry about that. You can create a gradient like new gradient, and then you can customize it. You can customize any gradient by clicking this these areas here, or you can choose the color that your gradient compromises from. So, for example, green and white, green and sorry uh, green and black and all that kind of stuff you can make them you can make them to an angle like always to an angle the gradients you can make them radial create circles you can make them linear um you can make them linear to angles but not like that angle thingy um and and you can create where they start from and all that kind of stuff you you have the fill tool of course which you choose the color and you fill things of the same color again or you can just go to edit and you have all this stuff here for example transform which can move the the image you have on the composition of the selected layer around uh, fl flip it around um, uh, increase the size and then you click OK and it should save. 
you have the sponge tool and you have the smudge tool and you can change the smudge tool's strength size from the brushes area and as you can see it blends the colors together like that you can make a mess with it or you can just blend out things sort of blend two images together you have this brush another like dusting brush tool it, you can use it to lighten the images and make them dull, duller like for example if you have highlights specifically over here you make, the, you make them duller so that your highlight can be somewhere else we have the burn tool that that makes things darker like for example if you wanna if you wanna if you wanna make a certain area of the composition darker you just use the burn tool you have the stamp tool or that's the stamp clone where you select certain areas and you clone them onto other bits so we can change our clone so I want this green area and I stamp it on the different bits as we can see we can color with it like it clones the whole photograph basically and then you can color the certain areas once so I just basically painted that onto that you can change the brush size sorry about that again you can change the brush size and color as you can see background layer yeah uh, we have the healing tool so for example that's what they use in Photoshop I had a photo and I had a pimple on it for example so let's just create a new layer edit fill white and then I have like a black and then I have lots of lots of annoying freckles on it or whatever like um let's uh, default yeah and we want a black oh sorry yeah so oh my god it is selected to black best is zero but anyways we have the brush tool okay so sorry about that uh, anyways the healing tool you sort of select the area you want like I want the brush and with it oh yeah it's select soft light because anywhere where you select the blending mode the blending mode for example if we if we had if we had this as, as black for example we can we can make this we can make the blending mode uh, we can change the opacity how transparent it is we can change the blending mode so it's a soft light for example so it has small effect overlay linear light vivid light screen which totally removes all the black areas in the photo and all the dark areas but anyways we want the blending mode normal sorry normal uh, and we want to refill it white just as I said that was a problem I, I had my blending mode on because I was using this program previously so anyways we have the brush blending mode normal and then yeah we have sorry, we have lots of pimples on our faces and want a good photograph choose the brush size and then we basically color over the areas we want to remove and it uses the background around it to heal it look pimples are gone red eye tool which select red eyes and remove it tool I just showed and I sort of made the all this layer transparent we have the we have we this is called the uh, blur tool that for example if again we uh, let me drag and drop this time we um, we have the uh, we have the clownfish photo again yeah drag and drop Remember, use select tool to define it on your composition. We can blur it out, just as you can see. This is the sharpen tool that sharpens the image and makes it highlighted and more sharp. The uh, more sharp. Remember, you can you can always lighten that to make it sort of glow. There is the pen tool that you draw things with. We have the we have the circular pen tool we have the text tool where you can select your font, your size if your text is in the middle 
we have the shape tool which you can select if you want to fill it add a stroke what size what color draw a star we have lots of shapes we can zoom in and zoom out you choose from here and choose to zoom and then we have the color selection from the composition so you can paint with it and then for the tabs as I showed you the file tab which you duplicate your image if you wanna save another version of it you can change the page setup you can print it you can export the photo and I like the export thing because you can select the quality what kind of file it works with Photoshop files too and then when you click next I want it to JPEG choose where to save it on your Mac your most visited folders and your favorites and then you can change it name uh, change its name you click export but I want to cancel it have the you have the image where you select your image because every text and shape you do it creates a new layer automatically you can rename the layers by double clicking on them but I don't seem to mind with my names so image you can change the brightness and contrast do that give the photo more effects contrast makes it more monochrome cancel uh, you can you can change the curves the levels the exposure you can colorize the photo and colorizing is basically the same as the the hue and saturation tool here and but the difference in this you can just create the certain portions of this of this of this area uh, and as you can see you can saturate but now we're on the pen layer or the select layer lightness and so on the layer area which I showed earlier now I, I love this fill I love these filters because uh, these fill the uh, these filters, they they tend to create pretty cool stuff actually that helps with lots of photos and gives very good effects so filter um you yeah we, we have sorry we, we have the you select on the layer you want to add the filters to distortion you can add a bump in the photo like that make sort of fish eye and change the radius and the scale of the pump click OK you can add bump linear circle splash yeah exactly which added the splash to the photo like uh, the light tunnel effect in photo booth you can have um, you you can have a warp a circular warp in the photo but that kind of warp cancel uh, so on and so on you can sharpen it and unsharpen it stylize you can make it that kind of bloomy bloom thingy uh, you can you can make it you can you can crystallize it to make it like that and you have lots of cool filters stylized filters half tone title like that wow that's amazing and you have the you have the the blur yeah blur you have box blurs which you can change the radius of. You have uh, Gaussian blurs. But my favorite of all time, not the motion one, sorry, not, not the motion one. My favorite of all time, not the noise reduction one also. But my favorite, sorry, of all time is the zoom blur. That just gives it, you know, the light effect. You can change the strength and just spreads the color of the photo and blurs it out through all of the composition you have generators that create checkerboards clouds are my favorite you create a cloud you can make it you can use soft light it's blending mode and whoa what the hell is that uh, uh, blending mode sorry you have to create a new layer for the cloud cloud for this effect to work um, so, so filter generator clouds Okay, blending mode, uh, soft light, I'll explain later, see the effect it gives. It gives better effects with gradients, but anyways, um, you also you also can generate, uh, you can generate halos, star shines, stripes, sunbeam, and the view also, the window one, minimize and zoom, share the photo through these uh, networks and iPhoto, 
and the help where you just search the tool you want and it shows and, and it shows it to you. Sorry for the long walkthrough, but this has to be done or else my the rest of my tutorials are gonna confuse you very much because we can't spend time explaining every tool in the uh, because we have to explain the, about the to, about the specific things the tool does uh, in this tutorial so that we can use one of these things in the other in the walkthrough sorry in the other tutorials so so that so that we can make them swift quick and effective hope this has helped you I'll be back soon with more tutorials on other programs and on Pixelmator you are with Ali Bube, the creative artist from Omnitas HD.